Tell me what you're gonna do when you stand. Um, uh, lean forward and make sure I do don't it. lean back. Very good. One is Jindo. Good. You ready? Yeah. Count for me. One, two, three. We took a lunch IJ and I drove back and I started to go numb. And then before I eat me, I passed out. The last thing I remember is the ambulance on the way there. I knew that they were still working on him and that they were still trying to, you know, get him stable. And as people were coming in and they were, I mean, I had nurses coming in and asking questions and registration people, administration were coming in and, you know, our, our daughter was there and it was just, I don't know. I was trying to hold it together. <laughs> But just, I mean, there's just no way. I can't even tell you what it's like. She was freaking <laughs> out. Yeah, I really freaked out. <laughs> it's terrifying. Hey Kyle, can you make like 90 degree angles at both arms? Go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and wrists back, wrists down. Good. And then... Girl. <laughs> don't, don't take a picture of that. You know, you, like, you have a lot of thoughts that go through your head, but it's, it's hard to get anything out in a time like that. And I think a, a lot of our time in the ICU was staring at the monitor, which is a terrible habit. But they've got him hooked up to so many things. We watched his heart rate, his breathing rate. We watched his blood pressure. I mean, it was just every time the machine beeped or a yellow light flashed, I think, you know, I, I lost a few years off my life and um, that was most of our time in the ICU actually was in silence, I think. You get out to the waiting room and you have friends and family up there and you're distracted and you have other things, you know, people get you talking about other things, lighter things, but in the room it's pretty, it's pretty serious. It have gone from a stroke to a, blame, a brain bleed. And it, that's why the symptoms were so similar. Um, and then after they did the MRI, they realized it was actually in his brain stem. You know, they, they couldn't give us anything. It was brain trauma, such a gray area that it was minute by minute. Supposed to be a birthday party on that surgery, mm -hmm. but you know, surgery. <laughs> <laughs> And even now, it's still day by day. We don't know, you know, what functions he's going to recover and what deficits he'll remain and um, how long it'll take for any, you know, for full recovery if, if that's possible. And there was a turning point on the rehab floor where it was almost like someone flipped on a light switch. And he woke up and it was like, you know, he was moving his fingers, he was trying to move his arms. He was, he could wiggle his toes, but also move his feet. You know, and it just, it was just, it was great to see. <laughs> we go to rehab almost every day. And then I come home and the therapist there give me exercises to do while I'm there. And I always eat dinner and with Kitty and Dad and Mom. And then I watch a lot of TV. <laughs>